I just recently shot a, a video and I'm getting ready to start editing it. But I went to the mailbox and I got a couple of things that I wanted to show up. If you are not signed up for Llewellyn Worldwide's um, catalogs and things like that, do it, do it, do it, do it. Every quarter they send out this great little um, magazine called New World where it's got a lot of, it's got articles, it's got articles and it's got information, but it also is a little bit of, you know, it's a catalog, it talks about different things. Um, but, but in addition to this, what came is my new Llewellyn's 22-23 tarot catalog new releases in the back of us. This is, I mean, it's like tarot porn. You know, it's just, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to look at the decks and I am going to lust over what I don't have. And I always kind of go through and I always look like, have it, need it, want it kind of deal. So I do this every year. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to take y'all along. So if you want to take a look, at a flip through of the Wellens 22, 2022 to 2023 tarot catalog, um, stick around. So every year, um, so every year Llewellyn puts out a catalog, and it is substantial, and it is always fun. It's huge. It's a big catalog size, and it is a great way to kind of look and examine what decks are coming out, uh, what decks are on, which are still in print, things like that. So I, I always enjoy. So here's the cover. Um, instantly, I realized this is from the Soul Cats Tarot, which I don't have, um, but maybe I don't. let's take a look quick. Look. So um, it is a free catalog. Y'all should be getting this. And so if you want the information, it's there, Llewellyn Worldwide, Llewellyn.com. Go get it, get registered, have fun time. So, it's awesome. So, okay, so first up, we have the Trick or Treat Tarot. And this is, I'm gonna set, I'm on the fence. I don't, I think I'm gonna pass on this, but I'm intrigued. I definitely want to see some flip throughs and see how, how it looks once it comes out. I, I may take that back, but I think this one is a pass. But it looks really, really interesting. Next, the Tarot of Dragons. This um, looks really interesting. I've kind of seen it before. I, I also think this is going to be a pass. Because I still have the Smoke, Ash, and Embers uh, Tarot that I still need to work with. So I think that's going to be my next Dragon deck. Uh, but, but the artwork looks so good. So good. The Soul Cats. I'm not a cat person, I'm a dog person. Um, but every time I see this one, I get more and more intrigued. So yeah, it's like, even like, just looking at this one, I knew this was the Hermit card. Um, so I might be, um, be convinced too. The Lustrous Lendermond, this looks interesting. It's another um, take of Chiro Marchetti on the Lendermond. So... I, I see that? It's got the card insets, which I'm not a huge fan of. But ever since I got the Lenoracle, um, the Life Line Lenoracle deck, I realized I really should know the uh, card, playing card attributions of the Lenormand cards. Uh, the Empath's Oracle, this looks good. I'm definitely going to be looking at walkthroughs before I commit to this one too. But it, it is on the radar. Now, you know the Witch... Yeah, I think I'm out. I don't think I'm super interested in that at all. Cool. But um, this is from um, Laura Tempest Zakharov. I did read her We the Liminal, and that was pretty good. Now, this dark side of the trope is, so far, it's probably my most likely to get. I just somehow, in the last couple of days, I've been, got, I've been in the mood for a new black and white deck. And then more specifically, I'm thinking... I want something in the Marseille style, so the Inversion Tarot um, by US Games, um, which is in a tent, is catching my eye, but this looks really cool too. It has, um, especially this card, it has a little bit of a, the darkness of light feel for it, for me, so we'll see. Symbolic Soul Tarot looks good. Um, yeah, I'm in the mood for um, a black and white deck, so this one isn't... Hitting that right on the nose for me with the gold. Um, now, if that is gold foil, I might. It is going to be gold foil. We might revisit this 
Again, that's going to need some walkthrough. Uh, the spiritual tarot looks fascinating. Uh, this is a probably um, will acquire um, in October. Yep. Steampunk uh, Art Nouveau tarot. We'll see. It seems like this is a kind of a full part of my catalog right now. We'll see. I'll, I'll look at it. Um, what's turning me off is how dark the cards look in this image. And so that could be an issue or might not be. So I'll have to see. But yeah. This uh, Notra Tarot in Light. Um, this is interesting to me a little bit. Now the Goetia Tarot I was out on and didn't like. Um, but this, this might be something I might consider too. I just have a feeling that the system is going to be weird because it's angels. Um, and it won't fit what I think of tarot. So, we'll see. Tarotino. Oh, so, no, I'm not on that. New mini decks. No, I don't need any more mini decks. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the Los Garabeo mini deck size. I think it's just a little too little for me. Okay, now we're getting to... Now we're getting to oracles, and here is where I'm sorry to see. This compendium of a witch's oracle is, um, yeah, it looks really cool. I'm pretty sure that this was a Kickstarter or a crowdfunded deck that has um, been picked up, and I'm definitely interested in this. One thing, just initial reservations, is I like how the cards are kind of borderless, go all the way to the edge of it, and there's some of them, it looks like there's a white border around it. So that might that might be a little bit of a turn, but yeah, I'll, I'll yeah I'll probably get that. The magical uh, botanical oracle. I'm not huge with herbs and things like that, so I'm probably not going to get this. But I like the images; it looks really neat. The night fairies, um, Paolo Barbieri. I love his work. Um, so I have some of it and some not. So maybe maybe not. This Journey of the Lonely Soul, um, just looking at it, I think that this is going to connect with a lot of folks. Um, not me, but I think we're going to see some folks raving about this um, come fall. So, yeah. So, the, yeah, this Gustav Door is, is a black and white deck I'm looking at. Um, it looks a little too detailed, which looks, which I almost would never say that um, for the black and white. I think it looks something a little bit more stark and contrasty. But this um, Essen's, uh, I'm not going to be able to say that. This is the Major Trumps from the Terror of the Third Millennium, which is a great deck. And I have said for at least a decade that if this were a, a Major's only deck, I, I would buy it. Um, and now it is, um, I definitely pick it up, but I was talking with someone, uh, Carrie from, uh, from her channel, um, I'm gonna forget the name, um, that I, I if I want to do a majors only reading, I would just grab the majors from my deck, and I don't do a lot of majors only, so, but that's cool. Nope, the Templar, I'm not interested. Yeah, like, on the Marseille, is. Fine, I just think I want a black and white one. I have the Heaven and Earth Tarot, which is really cool. I do like the idea of the um, circular um, right away that they've got here. Um, specifically when you look at things like the High Priestess, when the rectangular card, it's trimmed down here, and so you've got more background. So I would, I'm sure there's a walkthrough. I've seen if I want. I would love to see a walkthrough of that deck. Oh, so much fun. The in-between tarot I just recently picked up and I'm, I'm intrigued with. I really like the idea. The way that the suits were done is um, leaves a little bit to be desired. But the creator uh, has a TikTok and I follow her and she does a great job. Yep, the tarot of Carlotides. I've seen it. I'm, no, I'm out. Tarot de Luce. Mm -mm. No, it seems like it's kind of on the cutesy side, but no. The regular cards have changed. Yeah, no. Yeah, fortune telling cards I'm not as in on. So those aren't. <laughs> so someone someone gave me a point with myself. If I have infinite money. 
if there's anything on this page, I, I do this, I got, is there anything on the page I own, or if there's, if, if I didn't, what on this page I would buy, um, the regular cards of change would be my, would be my bet there. I want more on the back side. This happy things, this happy little things deck, um, is catching my attention. Um, I don't think I'm going to get it, but it's really interesting. Um, I'm too much of a prude for any, like, sexual magic deck, so, nope. Fortress of a Woman, that's really interesting. I'll have to look at that when it comes out. It doesn't say how many cards. 45 cards. 45 cards in an oracle is kind of my lower limit. Just, it's the bottom. I want more cards. See, like this Egyptian Gaza Oracle, it's um, 22. I'm, mm, all right. Now we're going to get to all the kind of fluffy bunny, I think, um, oracles that just don't interest me. Yep, no, nope, neither of these. I like the arts, the heart shaped, and I need to do a walkthrough because when I talked about it in my Let's Go Everybody collection, my heart to row, which I like, um, heart shaped decks riffle shuffle way better than you think they would. The Water Temple Oracle. I think Lisa Papaz has talked about this. So I'm interested. So, but I don't do yoga. But I like the images. On a Yoga Wisdom Oracle cards. Um, Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. I have uh, Alana Fairchild's her uh, Isis Oracle. And that gets me where I need to go. Uh, I have thought about trying the Kuan Yin um, side of it. But I just don't know enough. Mystique of the Magdalene. Someone else was talking about this, too. Now, these little bitty Oracle decks, I'm not sure about. Um, I have one, and I think it's actually handy if I need two seconds. Okay. No, I think I might lose it. Um, the Forest Fae by Rockpool. Um, I might, so we'll see. But no, I, I, I don't think I'm going to get rid of those. Crystal Cross, I don't do crystals, so I'm out of here. Yeah. Nope. Maybe none of those. Into the Lonely Woods. This looks really interesting. Um, yeah. I know it's been out. I just. It reminds me of where the wild things are. Great Eastern Oracle. Nope. So this is the one I would get. Yeah, I'd get the Dragon Oracle here, but like I said, I'm gone dragon for now. I love my secret oracle. I didn't actually shoot the video, but I did meld that and the messenger oracle together, and it's good. It's fun. All right, so let's go. This is the tarot catalog, and this is kind of everything. Um, it is in alphabetical order. A lot of those Garabano. So we're just gonna okay. then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through this pretty quickly. Um, I don't like this. The 3D tarot, it looks, the computer generated art is a little off to me. I, it doesn't look human enough. Um, also, I'm not crazy about the cross because it's an equilateral cross. Um, I like my crosses to be a little bit up, but if it makes it reversible, it's got to be in the middle. So, um, I don't have the African American tarot. I did have the Afro Brazilian tarot for a minute, um, did connect with it, and then traded it away. I do have the Alchemy of the Seven. Uh, uh, 1977 deck, which I like. It's one of my dark decks. Um, I don't use it a lot. Um, and I do have the Animal Totem Tarot by Lisa Robinson, which is good. I don't have any of these. Why am I not on board with the Anna K? It seems like it's such a classic that so many people like that I would I should get it, but I don't. I have the As Above deck. I have the Bix Tarot, which I love. It is a perfect kind of mini size that's bigger. Um, I love the kind of the... Sometimes the rabbit is gendered and not, uh, but it provides just this great little little fun deck. And I try to look to more references on it because I think it's Swedish or Belgian uh, artist. Um, so it's kind of urban art. It's really, really fun. Um, this one also, too, if you're looking for just kind of fun deck, this one goes on sale on Llewellyn.com a lot. So you might keep an eye out for that if that looks fun for you. 
It looks really kid friendly too. The black cat tarot, um, it's weird. It's again, it's a like cat as people, which I'm out on. Um, I don't have any of these. I had the Bosch for a while, and it is, well, it was, it was something else. Like I traded it because it was too violent for me. Nope, Casanova. I am too prudish for that. Um, I love my cat tarot, um, which is still on hand. So I definitely this gets my recommendation. Um, the Nicoletta Tricoli tarot, I don't have. Um, and there's just someone in a video about how the the nine and the ten of swords should have been flipped. And once I saw that, I was like, I'm never getting that one. So no, cool. Um, I do have the Celtic Dragon Tarot. I have almost all of Lisa Hunt's decks, which is so much fun. And I don't have either of those Celtic or the China Tarot. I do have the Circle of Life, which is great. I do have the Cirque du Tarot, which I haven't used a lot. But Don Michelle on the Boho Tarot just did a deep dive with it, which really ignited my kind of passion for it again. Specifically in regards to the core cards, which I was having trouble connecting with, and the way that she went through it, I really, really liked. So, that's good. Um, I don't have the Classic or the Cleopatra. I have the Crystal Tarot, which is great. It's a, a, it's a fun kind of pip deck, which has a little bit of a throw to um, Brian Wake Smith. A little... Um, there is some switching of the elemental energies and suits that threw me off. The Dame's Wheel for Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot I did have. Um, I got this right about the same time I got Paul Houston's book, um, The Mystical Origin of the Tarot. Um, I really liked it. The book, um, I thought I was really going to like the deck. Um, when the initial pre-release of the deck, the board, it wasn't a white border. It was like a, a tan or something, which really made the... The images look really a lot better. I got it. I hated, hated the white border. And normally white borders don't bother me, but I was out. Um, but this has by far one of my favorite all-time bags. For the, I love like on the stained glass design there, and it is just gorgeous. Uh, Dancing in the Dark Tro is also interesting to me, and I've I almost got it. It seems reminiscent of the um, not the True Black. Right here. I can't believe I can't remember the name. Yeah, the True Black Tarot. Um, it seems like they're kind of bouncing on that idea. Um, and so I was interested, uh, but then I realized I just I would never pull it because I'd always just go to my True Black Tarot. This is the second Dante Tarot that Los Guerreros did. I like the first one better, and I have it. I have the Dark Angel, and I'm pretty sure I traded that away. Don't have the dark fairy tale. I'm not interested, and I do have the dark grimori tarot, which I love because again, it's um, I love the art. Pedro Elagio, um, I love his art. I love this deck, and it and it was this deck that got me to read Lovecraft, which I also really enjoy. So that's that's a cool deck. Um, I do have the dark witch tarot, which is great. Again, the Cameron tarot. It's too sexy, sexy for me. I don't like. Um, I do have the Dreams of Gaia. Full edition, um, but I don't know for how much longer. Um, I'm not connecting with it. I love uh, Raven Fallon's uh, art, um, which I've connected a lot better with her Seeker Messenger Oracle. So I'm gonna keep. So I'm gonna keep those. So, so this might be a detriment to that. So I might move on. And then the pocket size, which I think I might like the size better, um, and the back's way better. Uh, but the fact that it's not a traditional tarot, just I can't connect. With it. I do have the Easy Tarot, of course. Um, I've considered the um, Edgar Allan Poe Tarot. Um, I've seen a couple walks through it, and that's really, really interesting, uh, but not yet. The Edmund Dulac Tarot looks interesting. Um, in, I know, let's care about it. What are you going to do with borders? Um, but I'm not crazy about those. It's a thick border there, and I can't do it. Um, and Egyptian Tarot, for the most part, um, I have a knee-jerk reaction to Egyptian tarot co as a concept because I hate the theory that tarot came from Egypt. And it's this idea that, oh, well, you know, tarot came from Egypt, and so these are, like, original. And that's not what anyone's saying. No one's saying that at all. And so, But still, I can't get to it. So, um, so then that's out. Uh, the Grand El Grand Tarot Esoterico? No, don't have. 
Uh, I do have the Epic Tarot deck, um, and then this is also by Paolo Martinello, who is one of my favorite, favorite tarot artists. Um, and I am I still need to do a walkthrough of that so I can have walked through all those decks. So that's probably coming. Um, and again, um, Erotic Fantasy Tarot is not my cup of tea. The Essential Tarot looks interesting. I think it's a little too minimalist for me, so no. Uh, Etruscan Tarot, I don't, I don't get it, so... <clears throat> That's no. Um, I do have the Everyday Witch Tarot, which um, Jason at the Tarot of Pines is going to be doing a a uh, deep dive. I'm holding him to it. Um, and when he does, I'm going to get mine out, and I'm going to go through it and look at the cards and try to catch his passion for it, because he loves this deck. And I just can't quite connect with it. So, I mean, it's fine. It's cute. Um, I'm glad I have it in my collection, but I'm just, I don't, I don't use it at all. And then I don't have a mini. Um, I do have the Fairy Life Tarot deck because I love uh, Lucia Mattioli, um, her art. Um, she also got the Tarot of the Secret Garden, which is really cool. Um, and I followed her whenever this deck was coming out. I think you see it here, where she took two cards and made it one scene and then split it. So that each half related to the Tarot card, but it made a, grit, a bigger scene. And the thing is, is they were almost kind of random. They didn't, they weren't necessarily the same suits. One was a major, one was a minor. And so it was a good puzzle. Um, but there's borders on it, so you can't actually, there was cost a line on when you put the pictures together. I think it was Danny Mystic who trimmed it and was able to make it work, but I, I haven't been able to. So I still have it. Um, I also, when I talk about my favorite back designs, this is the one I picked because I love the backs on this one. I did have a the fairy tarot at one time, uh, but I did pass it on, and so and I don't have either of those. The fairy tarot, which I love, and I talk about constantly. Uh, Force of Enchantment is probably my next set from Los Gear I'm gonna get, but I don't have it yet. The Frida Kahlo Frida Kahlo tarot is interesting. Again, the heavy border is just is pulling me out there, but I think it would be really interesting to see. And I don't have any on this page. Nope. Again, the Goyesh Tarot I've had, um, and don't like, I stopped connecting with it. The uh, Golden Art uh, Nouveau I love and have. And now, and then a couple months ago, I bought the Golden Botticelli deck, and I was working with it. And I went to go look for it for the day, and it's missing. I don't know where it is. So I'm kind of desperate to find it. So, but yeah, but it was a great deck. Um, I have the Golden Tarot of Columbus, which is great. And that's one on the side. The Golden Dawn Magical Tarot seems like it would be a really interesting deck to study and to examine, but I don't think I would ever use it, so I don't have it. Um, I have the Golden Asante Tarot. I don't have the Golden Trump, I just have the regular one, um, which is great. I love the Golden Terrace, but it can be a little overwhelming. Um, I have the Green Witch. I want the Happy Tarot just because Lisa Puff has left it a lot. Um, and the Gregory Scott Tarot deck, um, I don't know what it is, but there is a lack of diversity in it that that just, I, I, I can't, I can't do it. Now, all, not all my decks have diversity in it, but the just... I just, I'm not connected. So I don't have that one, but I kind of want to like it, but I don't. The Harmonious Tarot, I have um, and don't like. Don't connect with it. Um, Heaven and Earth Tarot Kit, I have, which I like, uh, especially because it's very uh, Golden Dawn based. Um, I have the Initiatory Tarot of the Golden Dawn, which I talked about in my Little Scare Barrow collection video and also in my... Um, Options for Thoth clones. So. I still, um, this John Bauer tarot is it's interesting. Um, again, the border is just, uh, and I don't like those backs. This Jack O' Lantern tarot, this gives me a lot of the feels of this first one. The Trick or Treat tarot, which just looks, looks, just looks dark. It looks, looks a little on the scary side. Um, so, no, I'm not on that. But I definitely think I like the artwork. Because it has kind of a weird kind of cluttered, but dense kind of feel to it, which I know. 
Karma Sutra Tarot. Nope. I did have the Laws of Attraction Tarot. I think I passed it on. Because um, I don't remember seeing it when I did my Let's Get Real. Uh, Legacy of the Divine Tarot, which I love. The Liberty Tarot, which I also love. Um, the Life Trader Tarot I got um, not too long ago after falling in love with the Otherkin Oracle. Um, and I really, really like it. I don't have the mini, but I really, really like it. And now um, I'm really looking forward to uh, CeeLo Thompson is working um, with the Hermit's Mirror to do a um, the Seascape Kipper deck. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I love seeing their updates on that. The Llewellyn Tarot, I never got. Um, because I just really haven't connected with the King Arthur thing. Uh, in general, um, but like I've said before, like every Ace of Swords is Excalibur. And I don't have the classic. So this looks like this might be a great beginner deck. I'd really like to kind of read the book to see if it, um, if it's a, if it makes a great beginner book. So yeah, so that's the mini. The Little Scarab Barrel Tarot I have, which is great. Um, the next, you know, I am considering the Mystical Dog, Magical Dogs Tarot, which looks fun. I do love the Manga Tarot, and one thing I love about it is what they did with the gender swap. It was really, really unique. Leo Marseilles. I don't really read Marseilles. Yep, no Masonic, no Medieval. The Mermaid Tarot I have. I did a walkthrough early on in my channel. I do have a Spellcaster's Tarot, which I like. Um, it's the people with the no faces. Um, that the high priestess and the hierophant that uh, just turns me off. Right. I did have the mystical dreamer tarot and I passed that on. Um, I, that was a trade table at I'd say news before I passed that on up. I do have the mystic fairy tarot kit. I love it. Um, I am drawn to considering to get the new editions for the borderless cards, but I don't think I would use it any more than I use the one I have now. So, which is not often. So nope. No, I'm not a cat person. I do have the Mystical Manga Tarot, which I talked about in my Day in the Tarot 2021, 22 video. I do have the Mystical Tarot. The Native American Tarot, um, just being someone from the heartland of America, uh, there are a lot of uh, indigenous folks where I live and my friends. And this seems a little cultural appropriate appropriation that I just can't get behind. Because one, Native Americans, don't use tarot and don't ask to know. Uh, the Necronomicon tarot I did have. Again, really dark and passed on. I do have the Night Sun tarot, which I like. It um, really walks the line of the computer generated art that I don't like. So, And then I, don't have the, I do not have the Orishas tarot. Like I said, I don't like the mini. Oh, the Contro, I have what I like. The Pagan tarot is a recent re release, and I had this. Back in the original release, I had the kit, um, and I really liked the idea. It didn't connect with me because, um, one, I'm not pagan, um, but I really liked the story and the development of the main character, and I really could see a lot of people liking that. So that does have a recommendation for a deck that I don't have that a lot of people may like. And if I'm getting a panda tarot, it's not this one. Uh, the Victorial Key to the Tarot. This seems a lot like the 3D Tarot, uh, which I don't like. Um, on this page, I do have the Quantum Tarot. Um, they dropped the 2.0, which it is the second edition because there was Kanani put out the original. Um, but I recently watched a walkthrough of the Primordial Tarot, and I am a little bit intrigued. I saw this initially in the 20th anniversary Los Scarabeo book as the Tarot of Origins, um, and when they re-released it, I, I hesitated, um, but I might, I'm now rethinking that one. Um, the, the Rackham Tarot, I am considering getting. That's, that's on a, a potential. Um, the Radiant Wise has been um, as a potential uh, RWS clone, but I haven't gotten it. I do like the coloring, but I have plenty. And again, Egyptian Tarot has turned me off. Uh, the Raven's Proce Prophecy Tarot. Um, this has a lot of issues and a lot of reasons why I don't like it. It's a little orange. Um, the symbolism is a little different. Uh, but Maggie Stiff Stiffenotter, I um, 
read her Shiver series about the werewolves, and it was okay. And I tried to get into the Raven's Prophecy cycle kind of books, and I just couldn't. I couldn't get it. I that, that's a did not finish. Uh, the Revelations Tarot is one of my favorite tarot decks of all time. Um, I am actually maybe considering getting a new one uh, because it is starting to show some age, and I want to come and keep with it. Uh, the Robin's Wood Tarot, um, speaking of no diversity, um, is a deck I do have, and then I don't have a romantic tarot because I'm a fruit. The Ro the Nigel Jackson Rose Tarot looks interesting. Um, I just want the Nigel Jackson Tarot. Which is out of print, I still believe. The Rodeo Dark Tarot I have. Um, the Runic Tarot, I don't, I'm not going to get, um, because I think, I don't connect as much with Runic Tarot as I do just working with runes. So, let's do that. And the a Sacred Circle Tarot. God, this seems like it's been around forever. Um, I don't have it either. Uh, the Santa Morte Tarot deck is great. I love it. I also have the um, Oracle, too. Scorpio C Tarot. I know I'm okay. I do have the secret tarot. I have, I've had the secret tarot and the mini. Um, I passed on the secret. I still think I have the mini. Or, may, or the other way around. Uh, but this is the one where I did have both. Uh, and this is one of the ones where I traded the mini to someone. And then like a couple years later, she traded it back to me. It was funny. I was like, this is my deck. Came back. Nope. No sexual. Yeah. No amount. Um, I do have the shadow escape tarot. And like I said, and in another video, I just recently got the Czech version, which I love. I actually have two ver two copies of this deck, one still in plastic. Um, I do have the Shaman Tarot, which I do not like. Um, one thing they don't show on these backs is how pink, maybe they maybe they change it, how pink the design is, um, and it just seems to clash. And so, no, I'm out. Um, and I have the Sorcerer's Tarot here, and I'm thinking about the Skull of Busca Tarot. Um, the ladies at the Wildly Tarot podcast have got me really looking at that deck. Um, and the fact that it's really kind of, it's very pricey for a uh, math market deck has been the um, only consideration there. Um, but it's on the list. If he wants to get his four cups, I'll take it. Um, I have the Starman Tarot. I do not have the Steampunk. I am thinking about the Cerisic Tarot because I do love. Um, the artists work with the dream inspiration cards and with the tarot metamorphosis, which is cool. Um, and I also have the tarot apocalypsis, which I do not like and will be finding at home pretty quick. Art Nouveau tarot I have. I don't have the Grand Trunks. Nope. This makes this makes no sense to me. But to each his own. And nope, no, no, no. I want to think I used to have this deck, but I don't think so. I've had some angel decks that I've passed on because I'm not a, a huge angel fan. Nope, that's it on this page. I do have the Tarot Illuminati. And I did have the Tarot Kit for Beginners um, with the Universal Tarot brought up here right now. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe this is the... This is the one I would talk about. We're we'll talking about the classic tarot, and which I think might a good uh, beginner book. I would love to just, just read the book. I do love the tarot muha so much. I have two copies. And none on the side because, you know, Egyptians. This is more oracle to me. And I don't like, yeah, I don't like that one. Tarot oppositions I have here. I do have the tarot on my side. That's this is my Marseille deck that I use. My decks are my backs are different though. I do have the tarot mermaids, which is cool. Yep, nothing on that page. <laughs> if anyone's gonna watch this video, I'm just I'm surprised, but yeah, I'm also go through. Um, I have the this is I think the angel deck I had that I passed on. Yeah, it's this one. Um, I do have the Tarot of 78 Doors. I do have the uh, Tarot of Cult of, Cult of Fairies. Um, this was a kit, and I really kind of wish I'd gotten the book when it came out, but I didn't. Um, so I didn't really connect with it. I do love the Tarot of Dream and Tantris. Um, I like what it does um, with gender in the courts, because it's an all-feminine deck. And normally an all-feminine deck would just turn me off uh, pretty much straight off the bat. But um, this one is really ingenious. Um, it has a very kind of dreamlike aesthetic that it's cool 
Um, again, I'm not a fan of the computer generated, the computer art in this deck. I think I had this one and I traded it off. Um, no, on a haunted house. But yes, I do have the Tarot of Hidden Realm, which I do like. It's great. Uh, Tarot of Mystical Force, yes. Uh, the Tarot of Mystical Spiral looks interesting. I just don't think that it, the theme would connect with me as much. Tarot of the New Vision, I did have. Um, I think this is a great precursor to a lot of the before and after and vice versa tarot. Um, but I just like regular rarity stuff. Nope, I don't do a recess and I don't have the tarot of the Renaissance. Again, here, uh, Lucia Mattioli, um, her tarot of the Sacred Forest, I do have. I love that. It has the black and white image on one side and then the um, full color image on the other. I don't use it, um, and I learned this especially with the Vice Versa Tarot. I like card backs. I don't want to know what the card is when I lay them out. I like to try cards. I love the Tarot of Sweet Twilight. I think it's a really cool emo kind of deck that has a real sense of personality, which is great. No Tarot of a Thousand Nights, and I do have the Tarot of Vampires, which is also really good. The uh, Tarot of White Cat seems like it's been out forever, um, and I don't have, <laughs> but it, it, it makes me laugh when I see it. It's never a deck I actually use. Again, that's just a Ryan White Smith, which I don't have. And then the Tarot of Steamburger, I don't have. And that looks more like a Turok deck for the actual gameplay, especially from the Tales of Tips, though. No. Tarot V, I have, um, and I like, but I like the Tarot Z better. I like the... Because they kind of seem to have the kind of the same kind of look. Um, and normally I'm a more of a vampire fan than a zombie fan. But this one, I pulled it off a little bit better. And then the Tarot Witches I don't need. The Teen Witch Tarot, um, no. Flamma, no. Traditional Manga, no. And Triple Goddess, no. None of those. The TV series Tarot, uh, interesting. I definitely like the idea of the backs, but no. Universal Fantasy, I love. And I am, I am tempted to get the Borderless Edition. And I did have the universe, Universal Goddess Tarot for about six months, I would say. Again, this was, um, I really like the idea of how they put a corresponding goddess with each um, card. And so I kind of examined that. Never really used it. And when it comes to time, I passed it on. The Universal Tarot um, and I never really got along. Um, I wanted to like it because it seems Rider Waite Smith kind of enough. Um, but for me, um, I never liked the bonnet on the <laughs> strength card. And also, the pages seemed really old um, in the deck. And so that was that was an issue. Um, so I had it, and I passed it on. So. But that being said, this, uh, tri the uh, Universal Transparent Tour looks like it might be fun to play with. Um, so I've considered getting it, but I haven't. Um, I did have the Universal Worth Tour. I think I still have it somewhere. Um, I think it's a great system to examine because um, it has a different take on tarot, which is interesting. And the Dantina tarot uh, looks cute, um, but no. Uh, the vice versa tarot I had, um, and just I was I like the idea a lot of having two sides of the scene on both sides of the card, um, but just couldn't get around the fact that they didn't have card backs. And so I passed that on to a very happy um, attendee at Newt's um, in 2020. Uh, it was almost the last day. She was really wanting it and um, was trying to manifest it. And it was really fun. I was able to drop it off for her. And I didn't know. <laughs> and she, she was super excited. So that was good. It was good to see that went to a home for someone who was really going to appreciate it when I didn't. Um, and then Biscontis. I have this Biscontis Turo. I love this back. And I don't like the Turo. Um, I do have the Vox, Vox Arcana, which I do like as a collaborative deck, um, which is fun. Uh, it didn't connect with the Wheel of the Year Tarot, so I passed that on. I recently got the Witch's Tarot last year, but haven't really gotten a chance to use it. Along with the Wizard's Tarot, there was just a solid week when I just bulked up on my uh, Little Scare Bayo decks and got both of those. I think maybe even in the same shipment, and you need to look at it. And I almost got this one, the Witch Lane Academy Tarot, um, on a whim the last time uh, Llewellyn had a sale. And I thought, no, I have enough. 
I made a deputy for crying out loud, and I keep forgetting. And then I do have the 13 Turo. Um, a little pippish for me, a little dark, so. Yeah. Um, and I want I want to like the idea of the professional edition Turos, um, but I, I don't like either version of those. Okay, so those are the minis. Right, now we're going to go to Oracles, and we're going to zip through these. Um, here's where I just kind of look at what I have and what is interests me and then kind of pass by pretty quickly. Um, I don't know what this one is, but that looks really, really cool. So, um, I do have the Angelarian, and I uh, don't use it, but I really like the art. Um, and I like the idea how it connects Kabbalah. So it's one of my, um, maybe one of these days I'll understand it. Okay. Um, nope. The um, Archeo looks good. I'm interested in that. I do have the Art Nouveau Le Normand, which is one of my favorite Le decks to use um, because it was one that I got early on. So I, I like the uh, Barbieri, like I said, the artwork. Um, and so these are something I might end up picking up because I like just perspectives. One, because I love this, the Fae with the cat looking at it and the unicorns, which I almost back the book on Kickstarter for those. I do have the Zodiac. Um, deck which I like. Um, I, I know I don't use Zodiac Oracles that well, um, but I like it, so I've kept it. Um, and then Beyond the Marion looks really cool too. Um, this one I might think about even just getting the pocket size for the um, to make it easy because I like how they put the meanings on the back, but I do love the back design. None of those. Mm -mm. Yep, nope. This dark mirror, I wonder how it works with the um, oracle. I'll have to look at that. And the, um, the tarot. The divine circus looks good. Uh, but I'm not going to get it. I do have the dream interpretation cards. Um, because I liked the original set. The original set had 78 cards. Um, they reduced it down to 36 and made it bigger. They also trimmed the images, so they're not as, they're more, they're borderless, um, and they're bigger, but they lost something in the trimming, so um, that, that was a bit for me. I thought about getting this set, but no. No of those. I just saw this at Half Price Books, um, and I might go back for it. It looked really kind of cool. I remember seeing it, and I don't remember where. Um, but I might go back and look at it. Yep. Nope, no flowers. The guy in Oracle looks interesting. Um, I really like the art, too. So that's on my, on my little radar. I do have the Halloween Oracle, which I like. Um, but like it seems like a lot of us, the um, Season of the Witch Sound Oracle has taken its place in my heart because I love it. Um, my new love for Celo Thompson makes me consider the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle. I just I just don't know enough about plants and stuff to make that work. I love my Isis Oracle and I have thought about getting the, the pocket size. Yep, the Kuan Yin Oracle, I've thought about getting, but yeah, like I said, there's the new wild one, wild Kuan Yin, which I didn't. The Lantern Oracle looks really good. I have some of Lucy Cavendish and Griff uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffiths decks. I don't have this, the vampire one. I've seen this deck decluttered too much to get it. Too many of y'all didn't like it. So no. This deck, the Musolia Oracle Soul Fist looks really powerful. Um, I just wonder if it might be a little dark. And it's 36 cards, so I've below kind of my threshold for what I like for Oracle decks. Except I love the Messenger Oracle. Got that one. I have the Nature's Whispers of Oracle cards, which I like just because I love the art. I have the Oracle Dragon Fae, which um, is good when I use it. I don't use it a lot. Nope, 
don't think about maybe getting a new room bag. I have Sacred Rebels. I do have a Santa Muerte Oracle, which doesn't work nearly as well as a tarot. But it's fun. I like the uh, the backs uh, turned into a spirit board, which is interesting. Um, and I tried it with a little bit of a pendulum work, and it didn't quite connect, but it was an interesting idea. Star Dragon, yeah, Paula Barbieri, yeah, looks interesting. Um, my love for the Cat Tarot um, makes me want to get the Steampunk Lenormand. Um, it breaks by Lenormand rules because the cards are too cluttered um, for the image to stand out, but I really like uh, Diana uh, Diana's work. Camararo, Camararo. So that's that's probably gonna happen. Twin Terra Oracle. This brilliant oracle features two twin cards for each of the twenty-two major cards of the Terra East. Huh. Anyone got this? I need to walk through. I need to walk through this. I'm gonna have to search for that too. Nothing there. Yeah, see the the cornian again. No. I got this, um, the winter seer animal oracle, and it was really good. Um, during the winter, I put it away when spring came back, but it might make it. I really, really, really like this one. Pretty cool. And then I think that's. I always wanted to get these just to try it out in my Sluggard Ability, which is non existent. But... Alright, uh, books. Um, Eileen, uh, Eileen Heverson's. I'm going to get this book. I'm going to get this book. She is a sweet, sweet soul. I love her to death. Love, love, love her to death. So I'm definitely going to get her. Um, I'm def I love Jenna Matlin. Uh, so I'm going to get the Will You Give Me a Reading book. Um, other books. Is that all I've been looking at? I've always wanted a crystal bowl. I just thought it'd be fun. I would never use it, but it would create the aesthetic. Cool. Yeah, I think that's... And tarot card sleeves, um, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I would love the idea of protective sleeves for my tarot cards. It would be impossible to shuffle. And what's even crazier is that this is a Starman's tarot. And if anyone has it, it's super long and narrow cards um, that they wouldn't... They aren't normal tarot size. So, okay. Love be some rainy maps. I always think like any one of those. I have the wooden rune set from Oscarabeo, and I really like it. I always want to kind of get a stone set, but I just don't. Oh. Look at all the bags. Look at all the bags. Pendulums. Always can get a new one. Yeah. The hematite rooms look like the best. But no, I just love the wooden ones. And they're just kind of zipping through. I can't, if anyone's watching this, God bless. Um, this is me just sharing my life. I thought about getting this book if it goes along with the oracles. I don't have any more books. There's gotta be more books. All right, so that's it. Little coloring books, fun. Here's more books. So I have a 33 and 80 degree spell. I have Around the Tower in 78 Days. I have Tower Reversals. I have Easy Tarot Reading. I have Essential, The Essential Lenormand, which if, you, you, if you're interested in Lenormand, this is the book to get. One, because I love Rena George. I love her to death. Um, so, it's easy. But yeah, but this is a really good book. Um, Fearless Tarot, I think, is on my to-be-read to list. I love Kitchen Table Tarot. I've read uh, Learning Lenormand. It's not as good as Essential Lenormand. Um... This uh, Llewellyn's uh, complete book of uh, Rye Smith Tarot is really interesting. 
Um, it took it a little different direction than I thought it would go, but it was definitely a great read and definitely recommend. Uh, Magic and the Magic of Tarot. I want to read is on my TBR to be read list for sure. Um, I have the Twenty One Ways to Read a Tarot card. I bought that twice because I lost a copy. Mindful Tarot. I want to read. I've read the new Tarot Handbook and passed that on. Pathworking the Tarot is also really good by Lise Robinson. Um, highly recommend. Um, so we're just talking about this tarot. I want makes me want to read it. Tarot by the Moon. I'm still working for, working through. Um, I was gonna post videos about it, but um, one it didn't seem like a lot of people were interested, in it, and it didn't really make sense to how I was doing this video. So anyway, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still doing it. So uh, tarot correspondences I have, uh, which is a good reference. Um, tarot de deciphered by T. Susan Chang. Um, and, and, and Malene, um, I listen to an audio, uh, which is a rough audio read because it's kind of reference, um, but I might re-listen to it again. It ended up being really good. I have Tarot Elements, which is great. Tarot of the Green Witch, I think this is a book I encountered a long time ago, and I want to just pick up a copy just to see if this is where I learned, um, or was taught, or they said, that you don't riffle shuffle a deck because it slaps the magic out or whatever, and that you should, um, always lay it out and it had a special way that you laid out cards for the first time tell for writers i have is red tarot plain and simple i read the old edition um it's got it. i'm still reading uh tarot rituals which is really really good um the first couple chapters of this book is just powerful um and i i will i will be talking about it at some point i'm still processing it but it's really good um, Tarot Spreads by Robert Moore, Moore is good. And... Understanding Tarot Court I have. Also, um... Your Tarot Court I also have, which is good. I think that's it. So that's, you know... Hold on, there's one more page. I bet there's more. Just, okay, more this off. Oh, there we go. Yep. Oh, DVDs, huh? So that's it. Um, I always look forward to the, uh... Tarot catalog. Normally, that also is followed by a sale um, in August that I have purchased a lot of decks on. So, like I said, if you're not on the Wellen Worldwide a reading list, get on it. It's it's so good. Um, just just for this alone, and then also, like I said, the New World um, magazine that they do. Again, it's I mean, their companies are selling their stuff, so they're it's it's a catalog. But here you have a little bit more uh, in depth. Um, into like the books and things like that, which is really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah, this, this might barely be. See, the witch's cap that looks really interesting. Yeah, these cards look really cool, but I just I don't think they're for me. All right, cool. Um, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.